Here we can look at the formation of hydroxynitriles. They are formed by the addition of HCN. Of HCN to aldehydes or ketones. So let's firstly have a look at the reactions with aldehydes. And I'm going to use ethanol as my example. Now, when we add HCN, as you'll see later on in the mechanism, it adds the CN in one step of the mechanism and the H in the next step in the mechanism. And the CN bonds to this carbonyl carbon and the hydrogen bonds to the oxygen. And that gives us the following product. And you can see that we've added my CN here, and my H there. That's the addition of the HCN. Now, if we're going to name this molecule, we always have to make the carbon in the nitrile group. This is called a nitrile group. We have to name that carbon carbon one. So that becomes two, that becomes three. You can see we've got an alcohol group on carbon two. The alcohol's got a lower priority than the nitrile group so the alcohol has to be written as a prefix and the prefix for an alcohol is hydroxy and it's on carbon two so it's two hydroxy my longest carbon chain is three so it's propane and this functional group here is called a nitrile So it's 2-hydroxy propane nitrile. The same reaction occurs with ketones. And I'm going to use propanone as my example. Again, the CN will bond to the carbon or carbon, and the H will bond to the oxygen. So again, the CN will bond in one step of the mechanism, H in the next. That gives the following product. And we can see that I've added my CN here, my H here. Again, I have to number the carbon, the carbon in the nitrile group is carbon one, two, and then I could go either side, but I'm gonna go to the left, three. We can see again, I've got an alcohol group on, group on carbon two. So again, it's gonna be two hydroxy. Again, I've got three in my longest carbon chain, but now I've got this methyl group. And because that methyl group can all be on carbon two, it's two hydroxy methyl propane nitrile. Now, we need to now look at the mechanism for this reaction. The mechanism for this reaction is the same as that for the reduction of aldehydes and ketones. It is a nucleophilic addition.
And I'm going to use ethanol as my example. The mechanism is the same whether we use aldehydes or ketones. The first step in this mechanism is to add cyanide ions, which is a CN minus ion. Please make sure that when doing this mechanism, you have your lone pair and negative charge on the carbon. First step of the mechanism is that the lone pair on this carbon is used to form a bond with the carbonyl carbon. So same as the reduction of aldehydes and ketones, this cyanide ion here is attracted to the delta positive carbonyl carbon. And it's delta positive, remember, because it's involved in a polar bond and the oxygen is a more electronegative atom. So it's got a great ability to attract the electron density. So, as this carbon carbon bond is starting to form, this carbon oxygen bond will break. And these, this bond forming and bond breaking occur at the same time. And that gives us the following intermediate structure. So this lone pair here, which is on the carbon, has been used to form this new carbon-carbon bond, and that pair of electrons are now there. So the lone pair that was here is now here. We can now see that this carbon-oxygen bond is broken. So the pair of electrons that were in this bond are now a lone pair that are on this oxygen. And it's also now got a negative charge. The next step in the mechanism is to add the hydrogen. And it adds it in the form of a hydrogen H plus ion. And pair of electrons, the lone pair of electrons, are used to form a new oxygen hydrogen bond. And that forms your alcohol. And that gives us the following final product. Now, we said in these reactions here that we've added HCN. Now, in reality, it's... In industry, you'd very, very rarely add HCN. HCN in solution is in equilibrium with hydrogen ions and cyanide ions. The issue is, is that the equilibrium lies very much to the left. In this equilibrium mixture, there is a much higher concentration of these, this compared to these. So in this equilibrium mixture, the hydrogen and the cyanide ions have got low concentrations. And that means the reaction between the aldehyde and the ketone and the HN would be very, very slow because we've got very low concentration of cyanide ions, and we need cyanide ions and hydrogen ions in the mechanism. So what we use instead of HCN is a combination of reagents. We use potassium cyanide and sulfuric acid. Now, potassium cyanide is ionic, so it's in effect in solution, a solution of potassium ions and cyanide ions and sulfuric acid being a strong acid is hydrogen ions and sulfur ions. So rather than use HCN, we use a combination of reagents, KCN and H2SO4, because the net result is an addition of 
cn and h okay so you can use hcn but it's more usual to use a combination of reagents kcn and h2so4 because the reaction is much faster okay because we have cyanide ions and hydrogen ions with hcn the equilibrium mixture only contains very small amounts of h plus and cn minus ions so you are adding hcn but you're simply adding the cn from the kcn and the h from the acid we're now going to have a look at the products in a little bit more detail and look at the products formed in the reaction with aldehydes Now, the product formed when ethanol, for example, reacts or it reacts with KCN and sulfuric acid, it adds HCN, is as follows. So I may be saying it reacts with HCN, but what I really mean is the addition of KCN and sulfuric acid. The result is it's still adding HCN. That's the product formed. Now, in the reactions of aldehydes with HCN, you always produce a product with a chiral carbon unless the aldehyde is methanol. So the products formed will always form a chiral carbon, and the chiral carbon is here. We've got four different groups attached. So we've got my methyl group here. That's my one group. My OH is my other group. My hydrogen and my CN is my fourth group. The question is, is, is the product, which is, is basically the product of the reaction here, is this going to be optically active? Well, you may argue that, yes, we've got a chiral carbon. So the product of the reaction between HCN and ethanol would be optically active. However, that's not the case. The reason is, is this cyanide iron can attack from above or below the plane of the carbonyl group. So I've got a cyanide iron which could attack there. But I've got a cyanide iron which could attack here. And if we get attack from above the plane of this carbonyl group, you'll get enantiomer A. If you get attacked from below the carbonyl group, you get enantiomer B. What you get then is you get a racemic mixture. Why is that? Well, it's because there's an equal chance of the cyanide iron attacking above or below the planar carbonyl group. If there's an equal chance of the cyanide ion from attacking above or below this planar carbonyl group, you're going to get an antima A and an antima B formed in equal amounts. Okay? So you're going to get a racemic mixture. And remember that racemic mixtures are optically 
inactive. Okay, so let's have a look at ketones. Now, what can we say about the products form when ketones react with HCN? Well, symmetrical ketones so for example um, propanone propanone would react with HCN to produce the following product and you can see now that there is no chiral carbon so symmetrical ketones they react with HCN to produce hydroxynitriles with no chiral carbon. So the product of that reaction would be optically inactive. This here would be optically inactive. It doesn't contain a chiral carbon. Unsymmetrical ketones Well, unsymmetrical ketones such as butanone, they would react with HCN to produce the following. That would produce products that would contain a chiral carbon. And you can see there we've got one, two, three, four different groups attached. So unsymmetrical ketones, they would, they do produce products with a chiral carbon. Would the product formed from the reaction of butanone and HCN would the product here be optically active? The answer again is no, because of exactly the same reason here. There's an equal probability of the CN attacking from above or below the planar carbonyl group. Therefore, you get two enantiomers formed in equal amounts, and that would give you a racemic mixture, which is optically inactive. So you react a ketone, a symmetrical ketone with HCN, the product formed would be optically inactive because there is no chiral carbon. The product formed when an unsymmetrical ketone reacts with a HCN would also be optically inactive, but this time because you form a racemic mixture. That there goes through all you really need to know about uh, the formation of hydroxynitriles.